The RTX 4090 is a complete waste of money. And no, not because it's bad. It's actually kind of insane how powerful this graphics card really is, but because there's just no way to justify spending $1,600 on a GPU unless you absolutely need the bleeding edge for work or if you just have endless disposable income, I guess. This is not the graphics card for most people, or even most enthusiasts for that matter. What it is, is a glimpse into what Nvidia's new generation might be able to offer at more sensible prices in the future. And that future looks very bright. Before digging in, make sure to get subscribed to Digital Trends and leave me a thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed it. The 4090 ushers in a new generation for Nvidia based on the new Ada Lovelace architecture. It's the top dog of the lineup right now with over 18,000 CUDA cores, clock speeds above 2.5 gigahertz, 24 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and board power of 450 watts. Basically, it's a monster and it comes with a size to match. The reference design takes up three slots in your case and measures 2.4 inches tall, 5.4 inches wide, and 12 inches long. It's a big boy and you have to account for more room than just the GPU. NVIDIA says you'll need an additional 1.4 inches of clearance because of the infamous 12-pin power connector. Yes, NVIDIA kept this connector around this generation, and it's more annoying than ever. Unlike the previous generation when the connection was at a bit of a slant, the 4090's power connector is flush against the GPU, adding more bloat to what is already a massive graphics card. Most power supplies don't have this 12-pin connection, so NVIDIA includes an adapter for standard 8-pin power in the box. It looks ridiculous, just like the previous generation, but it's even worse this time around. The 12-pin adapter breaks out into four 8-pin connections, which, combined with the unfortunate placement of the connector on the GPU, makes the 4090 look like a mess of cables, no matter how good your cable management is. Although the 4090 requires more power connections, it doesn't consume absurdly more power. 450 watts is definitely a lot, there's no argument about that, but that's the same limit as the RTX 3090 Ti. And compared to NVIDIA's other high-end reference design, the 4090 actually consumed a little less power based on my testing. The reference design stayed relatively cool as well, peaking at only 64 degrees Celsius in my test suite. I should note that I tested on an open air bench though, so expect higher temperatures once you put this card in an actual case. The 4090 is the only card from NVIDIA's new generation that we have right now, but NVIDIA will follow up with the 16 gigabyte RTX 4080 at $1,200 and the 12 gigabyte RTX 4080 at $900 sometime in November. We don't have an exact release date quite yet. With all that out of the way, let's get into the benchmarks. All of my tests were run with an AMD Ryzen 9 7950X with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 6000 memory, and I kept resizable bar, or in the case of AMD GPUs, smart access memory, enabled for all of my testing. Starting with a high level look across my test suite, this chart sums up the 4090's performance pretty well. It's the fastest GPU you can buy by far, outpacing the 3090 Ti by almost 70%. Compared to the 3090, you're looking at almost a 90% increase, and that's before you get into any upscaling shenanigans. I'll get to those later. In Cyberpunk 2077, the RTX 4090 is the only card I've tested that can crack the 60 FPS barrier at 4K with maxed out settings, and it handily cracks that barrier with a 78 FPS average. The 3090 Ti isn't even close at 51 FPS, while the 3090 is even further behind at 44 FPS. Red Dead Redemption 2 tells the same story with the 4090 offering a 52% increase over the 3090 Ti, as does Gears Tactics, where the 4090 managed a 74% lead over the 3090 Ti and more than double the performance of the 3090. I tested a couple games that traditionally favor AMD GPUs as well, and the 4090's massive margins are just a little slimmer. In Forza Horizon 5, the 4090 managed a 48% lead over AMD's RX 6950 XT, which is still a huge performance gap. A month ago, AMD's cards were the best option for a game like Forza Horizon 5, but Nvidia is blowing past that mark right now. 
And similarly, in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the 4090 managed a 63% lead over the RX 6950 XT. In the previous generation, it was a feat to hit 60 FPS in Valhalla at 4K with all the settings cranked up. With the 4090, Nvidia is setting a new standard well past that mark. Ray tracing performance is also impressive, aided in no small part by updated ray tracing cores available on Ada Lovelace GPUs. It's not quite double the performance of the 3090 Ti, but it's close. You're looking at an 80% uplift over the 3090 Ti and Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, as well as a 71% boost in Cyberpunk 2077 with its ultra ray tracing preset, both without any assistance from upscaling. This is far above a typical generational lift, but we need to do a little reality check. Don't forget that Nvidia said the RTX 4090 was two to four times faster than the RTX 3090 Ti, which just isn't true. It's a massive generational improvement, absolutely, but the marketing surrounding this launch is very vague and honestly pretty misleading. Nvidia has only shared these Apple-esque relative performance charts without any concrete numbers or any context for how that data was gathered. Why? Well, NVIDIA is trying to justify why the 4090 costs $1,600. Because although it would seem that the 4090 is replacing the 3090 and 3090 Ti at around the same price, that's not the case. The 3090 Ti is now selling for around $1,100, while the 3090 can drop below $1,000 for some models. The 4090 is nearly 70% faster than the 3090 Ti, based on my testing at least, but in the market the card is releasing in, it's also about 45% more expensive. That does work a little bit in the 4090's favor though. At current prices, the cost per frame is about $17 for the 3090 Ti, while that cost shrinks to around $14 on the 4090. Incidentally, that's the same cost per frame as the RTX 3080 10GB at $700. This is definitely not the best way to judge value, but as crazy as it sounds, $1,600 is a pretty fair price for the performance of the 4090, assuming you even need that much power in the first place. It may be a fair price, but that does not change the fact that the 4090 is not two to four times faster than the 3090 Ti. Nvidia didn't just pull that number out of thin air though. That performance comes from Nvidia's third version of Deep Learning Super Sampling, or DLSS. And DLSS 3 is absolutely insane. Just to note, this video is at 24 FPS, so if you want a full 4K60 look at DLSS 3, you can find a link to a separate video in the description below. Nvidia made a DLSS 3 test available to reviewers in 3D Mark, which just runs 3D Mark's Port Royal benchmark with DLSS off and then on. At 8K, which I don't even have a screen capable of, the RTX 4090 went from just under 13 FPS with DLSS off to nearly 87 FPS with DLSS on. For context, that is a 578% increase. It is quite literally the difference between unplayable frame rates and enjoyable frame rates, and that's all coming from DLSS 3. How is NVIDIA doing this? Well, DLSS 3 just generates new frames all on its own. The core of DLSS, which NVIDIA is now calling DLSS Super Resolution, is the same. It uses tensor cores on the graphics card to run an AI upscaling model so you can get a 4K image even if your graphics card is only rendering, say, 1080p's worth of pixels. That's not changing with DLSS 3, so older RTX 20 series and 30 series GPUs can still use super resolution in DLSS 3 games. Only RTX 40 series GPUs can use frame generation, though which is now a separate setting from Super Resolution and all your graphics settings menus. In short, the 4090 is generating a completely unique frame with its AI cores every other frame. One is upscaled with DLSS Super Resolution, while the next comes straight from the GPU without a single pixel being rendered. In fact, frame rate counters like Fraps and the one you find in Steam won't even pick up the extra frames because they're completely generated on the graphics card and sent straight out to your display. Make no mistake though, you can feel the impact of those extra frames. Nvidia provided an early build of A Plague Tale Requiem, which is an absolutely beautiful game, 
and DLSS 3 was able to boost the native frame rate of 66 FPS to over 150 FPS with maxed out settings. That extra smoothness makes a big difference, especially on a high refresh rate display. That experience comes at the cost of image quality though. If you look at the running animation in the grass with DLSS 3 on, there's kind of a mess as the AI struggles to figure out where the grass ends and the legs begin. There's a lot more to talk about image quality, but let's finish out what DLSS 3 even is in the first place. So DLSS 3 is super resolution and frame generation combined, but it has a third critical aspect, which is NVIDIA's Reflex. Reflex helps to reduce total PC latency in games, and it's forced on whenever you turn on DLSS's frame generation. The reason why is that frame generation has a lot of overhead, which would normally tank your frame rate. Cyberpunk 2077 is a good illustration of that. DLSS 3 with full frame generation provides the best performance, obviously, but remember that every other frame is coming from the AI. That means the GPU is only rendering about 70 frames, which is a decent way below what I got with frame generation turned off. Frame generation provides the best performance, but I still wanted to point out the overhead it incurs. It certainly seems that DLSS 3 would provide double the frame rate of whatever you'd get with just super resolution, but that's not the case. Even super resolution on its own provides huge leaps in performance. As mentioned though, performance is only one part of the DLSS 3 story. All the performance in the world doesn't matter if the game looks terrible, and anyone who's scrolled Twitter for more than five minutes knows the horrors of AI image generation. And there are definitely some problems with DLSS 3. The most obvious one is any moving elements in the HUD. As you can see in Cyberpunk 2077, the frame generation struggles to keep up with the moving quest marker, resulting in a sputtering of pixels as the marker moves across the screen. There's a lot of instability in fine details too. I pushed Port Royal at 8K with the aggressive ultra performance preset, and you can see the reflections bounce all over the place with shimmering artifacts. Any parallaxing between high contrast objects is also rife for artifacts, with pixels hopping around on edges, not quite sure where they should end up. It's not as bad as the first version of DLSS, but it's definitely not as refined as the DLSS we've had for the past couple of years. If you zoom out, it's easier to forgive these artifacts, and you can still definitely enjoy a game with DLSS 3 turned on. But it's not the make or break feature that NVIDIA has billed it as, at least right now. I'm confident NVIDIA will continue to update DLSS 3 to improve image quality, but we're not 100% there yet. The good news is that DLSS 3 doesn't need to be a make or break feature with the performance gains the 4090 offers. Sure, it's not two to four times faster than the 3090 Ti like Nvidia said, and there are some obvious fudging of numbers for that vague claim. But there's no denying that the raw performance of the 4090 is still much higher than what we see in a typical generation. And that leads us to a conclusion that is almost impossible to make. Gen on gen, the 4090 is very impressive, but it also wins by default. There is nothing to compete against the 4090 right now, and there won't be for at least another month until AMD launches its RX 7000 GPUs. And we still have no idea about how the RTX 4080s will hold up. It's not hard to imagine a situation where these cheaper models get close to the RTX 4090 in gaming performance, but we just don't have that testing yet. So no, I can't recommend the RTX 4090, but I can't recommend a $1,600 GPU to almost anyone. What I can say is that if you want the best simply because it's the best, Nvidia is firmly holding that title right now. The 4090 is far and above the fastest GPU you can buy right now, assuming you can afford the price tag. Even with all the benchmarks in this video, I actually ran more for my written review, and you can find a link to that in the description below for synthetic and rendering tests like Blender. Let me know your thoughts about the RTX 4090, Nvidia's higher pricing, and if you plan to pick one up in the comments below. While you're down there, make sure to leave a like on this video and get subscribed to Digital Trends. I'd really appreciate it. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching.